Every day, millions of people around the world use smartphones, computers, televisions, or smart cars without thinking too much about what makes them work. At the heart of all these devices is a tiny but essential component, the microchip. At first glance, it seems insignificant, but without it, much of our modern life simply would not exist. So how is a microchip made? To find out, let's visit a modern semiconductor factory and see, step by step, how something as simple as a handful of sand becomes the brain of our everyday technology. A microchip, or integrated circuit, is a tiny silicon plate that contains billions of transistors, those small switches that control the flow of electricity. They are the foundation of modern electronics and allow devices to perform everything from simple tasks like turning on a light to complex calculations in fractions of a second. Today, they are everywhere, in your phone, your television, smart cars, and even in the satellites orbiting Earth. But their story began in a much humbler way. In 1958, Jack Kilby, an engineer at Texas Instruments, created the first working integrated circuit using germanium. A year later, Robert Noyce, co-founder of Intel, improved the design using silicon, a more efficient and abundant material. That was the real starting point for the microchip revolution. Since then, the evolution has been rapid. A trend known as Moore's Law predicts that the number of transistors on a chip will double approximately every two years. To this day, that prediction has held true, allowing electronic devices to become more powerful, smaller, and more energy efficient. In a modern semiconductor factory, billions of microchips are produced every year. Each one is the result of engineering so advanced and precise that it seems like science fiction. Structures invisible to the human eye, organized with atomic precision, capable of moving and processing data at incredible speeds. But what is the process inside a microchip factory? It all starts with something you might find on a beach, sand. But not just any sand, a special kind rich in silica, which is the star ingredient used to make microchips. From this sand, silicon is extracted. This material is very special because it can either allow electricity to pass or block it, depending on how it is treated. That makes it perfect for creating the circuits that power microchips. To turn sand into something useful, it first needs to be cleaned to extreme levels until it is almost 100% pure. This is done by heating it in a giant furnace to over 1,400 degrees Celsius in a sealed space filled with a special gas called argon to prevent any impurities from entering. Once the silicon is melted, like a glowing soup, a small crystal seed is inserted and slowly rotated to extract a large cylinder of pure silicon called an ingot. Weighing around 200 kilos and measuring about 20 centimeters in diameter, this ingot is extremely strong. A thin thread just a few millimeters thick could support its entire weight. However, this ingot is not used as it is. It is sliced into extremely thin wafers, less than one millimeter thick, using special saws that look like ultra-precise wires. These slices, called wafers, are the foundation of microchips. But before they can be used, they must be polished until they are smoother than glass. This polishing is done with specialized machines and chemicals, because even a microscopic scratch or a speck of dust could ruin the entire process. Silicon is the hero of this story because it is a semiconductor, which means it can act like a magic switch. Sometimes it allows electricity to pass through, and sometimes it does not. This is key for microchips, which are filled with millions or even billions of transistors. These are tiny switches that turn signals on and off to perform calculations, display images, or run applications. Without silicon, there would be no way to control signals with such precision and in such a compact space. Once the wafers are ready, the next step is to decide how the microchip will work. This is like designing the blueprint of an entire city, but in a space smaller than a fingernail. Engineers use computer programs to create a detailed layout showing where each transistor will go and how they will connect so the chip can do its job, whether it's processing video, calculating routes in a GPS, or controlling a car engine. This design is not made casually. It is reviewed again and again to make sure there are no errors, because even one mistake could cause the chip to fail. Once the design is perfect, it becomes a template called a mask, 
which will be used to print the circuit onto the silicon wafer. Now comes one of the most impressive parts, transferring the design onto the wafer. This is done with an amazing machine called a photolithography machine. It's like a printer, but instead of using ink, it uses light to draw patterns that are hundreds of times smaller than a red blood cell. First, the wafer is coated with a special liquid called photoresist, which reacts to light, similar to the film in an old camera. To avoid damage, this process is done in rooms with yellow lighting, because normal light could ruin the liquid. Then, the photolithography machine shines a laser beam through the mask, projecting the pattern onto the wafer. After that, the leftover liquid is washed away, leaving the circuit design engraved on the silicon, like stamping a drawing. But a microchip is not just one layer. It is like a multi-storey building, where each floor has a different design. So this light printing process is repeated between 15 and 40 times, adding a new layer each time. Every layer must line up perfectly with the previous ones, with such incredible precision that there is no room for error. One of the biggest challenges is making the transistors smaller and smaller so that more can fit in the same space. This is important because more transistors mean faster and more powerful chips. This is where a brilliant idea comes into play. Immersion photolithography. Instead of shining the laser directly onto the wafer, it passes through a layer of pure water. The water acts like a magnifying lens, focusing the light and allowing engineers to draw transistors as small as two nanometers. That is smaller than many bacteria. These photolithography machines are so complex that building one can take months. They have thousands of parts that must fit together with surgical precision, but the result is a tool that can create trillions of transistors in just one hour. It is like having a factory of miniature cities working at full speed. When working with things this small, even a single speck of dust can be a disaster. The tiniest particle could cause a short circuit and ruin an entire chip. That is why microchips are made in clean rooms that are even more sterile than an operating room. These rooms can be as large as a stadium, and the air is constantly filtered with special systems that renew it every few minutes. Workers in these rooms wear special suits that cover their entire bodies, just like astronauts. Before entering, they go through air showers that remove any dust or dirt. All of this is to make sure the silicon wafers stay completely clean throughout the entire process. Once the transistors are printed onto the wafer, they need to be connected so they can work together, like building a giant puzzle. This is done using ultra-thin copper wires, thinner than a human hair. First, tiny grooves are carved into the wafer, like a miniature roadmap. Then, the grooves are filled with copper and polished to perfection. These wires connect all the transistors, forming a circuit that can be several kilometers long, all inside a chip the size of a button. But before the copper is added, the wafer is thoroughly cleaned and coated with a special layer to prevent issues like short circuits. This process is so delicate that even the slightest mistake could make the chip fail, so everything must be done with extreme precision. After a couple of months of work, the wafer is ready to become individual microchips, each wafer can hold up to a thousand chips, each containing billions of transistors. Using a highly precise laser, the chips are cut and each one is placed in a protective case with metal connections, usually made of tin or silver, so they can be used in a device. Before they leave the factory, every chip is carefully tested to make sure it works perfectly. Only the ones that pass all the tests go into the devices we use every day, like phones, computers, or even smart washing machines. What makes microchips so amazing is not just how they are made, but what they allow us to do. Thanks to them, we can carry in our pockets devices that 50 years ago would have taken up an entire room. Microchips are everywhere, in airplanes that fly, in hospitals that save lives, in video games that entertain us, and even in rockets that explore space. And the microchip industry never stops innovating. Every year, Engineers find ways to make chips smaller, faster, and more efficient. This means the devices of the future will be even more impressive, from self-driving cars to technologies we cannot even imagine yet. And that is how microchips are made. Tell me, what did you think of the process? Let me know in the comments. If you have not subscribed yet, now is the perfect time.
hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. Here are some other manufacturing processes you will love. Just click one and enjoy. See you next time.